All right, in this video, we're going to be talking a little bit about basis and span. Okay, so to begin, let's try to get an idea of what it means for a set of vectors to be a basis. So a set of vectors is going to be a basis if it has two properties. The first property is that this set, uh, it can be used to essentially build all of the other vectors that are in the vector space. This is going to be what's referred to as a spanning set. So a set of vectors that can, that can build all of the other vectors in the vector space is said to span. So uh, to be a basis, we need this property, but we're also going to need something else. The other piece of information that we're going to need is that we also um, we also need this set to be linearly independent. So linearly independent means that if you take any sort of a linear combination uh, and it's equal to zero, well that means that you, you didn't, all of the constants in front of the vectors had to have been zero in the first place. Uh, so let's talk, let's talk about breaking this down into the two different pieces. So once again, in the beginning, uh, we said that uh, the first property that we needed was we needed these vectors to, to span the space. The spanning is just saying that we can build everything in the vector space from this set of basis vectors. And the second thing was talking about linear, uh, linear independence. So we need these vectors to be linearly independent um, in order for them to be a basis. Alright, now if we take the typical example of a vector space, let's say we have, um, let's say that we have Rn. Well, Rn kind of comes with its, its own set of basis vectors that we often use. This set is called the canonical set of basis vectors. And these are just the, the really simple basic ones that you've probably already seen. So we would denote one of these by maybe, let's say, E sub I. And this would be 0, 0, 0, 0, down to 1. And then uh, zeros to the end of the vector. And this 1 would end up being in the ith position. So here we've drawn one of the basis vectors. But let's see an example. Uh, where we draw out all of the basis vectors for um, R4. So the first basic basis vector is going to be 1, 0, 0, 0. Uh, that'll be E1. E2 is going to be 0, 1, 0, 0. E3 is going to be 0, 0, 1, 0. And then finally our last one is going to be E4. And this one, you already guessed it, it's going to be 0, 0, 0, 1. Alright, so this is our canonical basis for R4. Now you might ask yourself, how do you check if a set of vectors is linearly independent? Okay, so let's take a look in a, at an example where we actually check this linear independence. Okay, so let's take our vectors here. So we'll have v1. Uh, it's going to be the following vector. So we'll take it to be, um, let's see, we'll just take it to be 1, 2, 3. And then let's take v2. This is going to be the vector 1, 1, 1. And then finally, we'll have v3. So v3 is going to be the vector where we take, um, let's take this time 2, 3 and 5. Alright, now if we want to check if these are linearly independent, we form the, va uh, the matrix A, where we take each of these vectors and they, we plug them into the, the columns of A. It would be fine to plug them into the rows um, alternatively, and all of this process will work the same. So the matrix A, if the determinant is non-zero, 
then these basis vectors will are these vectors will be linearly independent and in fact this is an if and only if statement if you take any linearly independent vectors and you plug them into a matrix in the following way uh, then the determinant also won't be zero so this is going to be an important property not just for determining linearly independent or when a set is linearly independent but also uh, just in general for properties of determinants so uh, let's take another look at an example of a vector space so let's take the the vector space of polynomials of let's say degree two so you might ask what is the dimension um, well in general polynomials of degree n um, they form a vector space that is uh, of dimension n plus one so uh, a set of polynomials of degree 2 is actually going to end up having dimension 3. So let, let's maybe see how this works out. So all polynomials of degree 2 can be written in the following way. We would write them out as maybe ax squared plus bx plus c. Alright, well in this case our basis is actually just going to be the set 1 x and x squared. So a lot of people forget the, the constant and will uh, mix this up, but this ends up being a basis for our space here. 